All right, what is going on guys? So it's been a while since I've done an unboxing of a laptop, but this is the top gaming laptop on Amazon. It is the Asus Tough Gaming lineup. And this one is a little bit more souped up than the Amazon one, but I'm assuming that the 10th generation all the way up to what I have in front of me, more or less is gonna be the same. It's just that this one is gonna have much more performance. So this one is rocking the i7 12th gen processor from Intel, has DDR5 RAM, 512 gigabytes of storage, as well as an RTX 3050. So pretty excited to get this unboxed because I've never had an Asus Tough laptop, but without further ado, let's get this unboxed. And you know about today's sponsor? Nobody. Let's go ahead and get the butcher knife just like that. Now, Asus has a pretty good reputation on this channel. Um, the Zephyrus is probably one of the best gaming laptops that I've used. I actually still have it with me. And let's go ahead and get this unboxed. I'm gonna have to open it up this way. Okay, so unlike the uh, <laughs> Zephyrus, the box pretty much just broke, because I think this portion might be a little bit too heavy. But let's just go ahead and get this out the box here. Um, we have some paperwork in search of incredible, some tough documentation. All right, so we have some pockets here. We have an arrow that is pointing here that doesn't really mean anything. Um, we have a little tab down here. This is where our power adapter and such is supplied. This is a 180 watt power adapter. On the other side, we have the power adapter and this side pretty much have nothing. So overall, uh, empty box, not too shabby. And let's go ahead and unravel this. Okay, okay, very interesting laptop, I will say. It's a very clean design. Um, has a nice aluminum finish on the front. Uh, where was this made? Oh, we have a red button on the bottom as well. Uh, I gotta give credit where credit is due. As always, this was made in China. Notice how we have some type of material here that kind of gives it a little bit of grip. You can also see that we have this rectangle portion here that kind of raises it off the surface. That kind of helps with airflow. Um, looking on the side, let's see what kind of IO that we're working with. So as you can see here, we have a USB port and a Kenenson lock, have some air vents as well. Uh, moving around the back side, you can see we just have a whole bunch of ventilation. Moving on to the other side, this is where we have majority of our ports. So we have a headphone jack, another USB port, um, USB-C ports as well. This one looks to be power delivery with Thunderbolt, if I'm not mistaken. HDMI, I'll have to check and see what type of HDMI this is. Full-size ethernet jack and a power adapter. Not exactly sure what this red button does. Doesn't even seem like a button, it's just decoration. Um, but let's go ahead and give this a smell. Smells like as if I was on a Jeep in the middle of the Sahara Desert searching for gold. All right, let's go ahead and unbox this. Wow. I've got to say this is a beautiful looking laptop. It's very lightweight. I would say I almost prefer this than the Zephyrus. It's so thin and light and not as bulky either. Like this is definitely a laptop where it's much more discreet. Obviously there's a lot of fingerprints going on um, because of the finish, but I would prefer this over the Zephyrus lineup any day of the week. Let me show you guys some of the features that we have here. So we have a lightning fast IPS level display. So as you can see here, we have a 165 adaptive sync. So that is a really fast refresh rate, good for the gaming. We have a mute, UX switch. Um, so all that really means is that you're able to switch between your dedicated GPU, which is this RTX 3050, and the integrated graphics. So if you want to save some battery life, you can use the one that's inside the um, processor that we have. Type-C fast charging up to 100 watts. We can use that with this Thunderbolt 4 port that we have here. We have two-way AI noise canceling. Haven't really found that too useful on Asus laptops. We have 4,800 megahertz DDR5 
RAM, which is great. And then we have an 84 blade arc flow to with- To set up your device using a screen reader, turn on narrator by pressing Windows plus control. Okay. Um, anyway, as I was saying, we have a, basically a lot of airflow going around this laptop. And then we have a whole bunch of branding here on the bottom, Wi-Fi 6, Dolby Atmos, high-res audio, RTX, Intel i7. It's a good looking laptop. Um, in terms of the layout here, definitely has the same font as the Zephyrus as well. Um, the keycaps here, you can definitely tell this is gaming focused because WASD it has a different color to it. Um, I, you can already see that the keyboard is kind of breathing here. You have some ventilation here on the top. As you can see here, I really do like this um, lighting indicator that we have here at the top center of the laptop because it really just makes it a lot easier to see what's going on. The other thing that I've noticed, let me move out of the way a little bit, we have a little bit of the logo embossed here within the trackpad itself. And the trackpad is a decent size. Um, so overall, in terms of first impressions, wow, that is a smooth trackpad. Overall first impressions, this is a really nice laptop. Now, the other thing that I want to know is how far back can this display go? And that's the maximum, so it can't go all the way back. A little bit of a disappointment, but not the end of the world. It is an IPS panel, so it doesn't really matter what angle you're looking at the laptop. You're gonna get good colors throughout the entire view and angle that you have. So let's get this set up and see what we're rocking with. All right, so we're finally in the laptop. So let's check out the full specs that we have here and then see if this computer has any upgrade potential. All right, so in terms of the brains of the laptop here, we have a 12th gen i7 12650H laptop. We have 16 gigabytes of RAM running in dual channel. We have 512 gigabytes of storage. Wi-Fi 6 is up and operational. And then we also have integrated and dedicated graphics with our RTX 3050. But let's see if we can actually upgrade this laptop. All right, so there are various screws around the laptop here, basically all the dark holes that you see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. This one does not come out. And just like that, we are inside the laptop and let's see what is upgradable. So, uh, as you guys can see, a lot of things are covered here, but it's not that hard to see what exactly is going on. Oh, that looks to be like the heat shield. I'm gonna keep that on there. Um, but it looks like this is our 512 gigabytes of storage. And if you wanna add more, you can add it in right here, which is what I'm going to do right now. So I'm just going to slide this one in here. It's not a big drive by any means, but it's just seeing if it has the capability to upgrade this at all. And we had 16 gigabytes of memory, but not anymore. We're gonna see what this can handle. As you guys can see here, it has some um, thermal pads shielding as well to keep it cool, which is great. But we're gonna upgrade to a good old 64 gigs of DDR5 laptop RAM. As you guys can see here, this one is 32 gigs each, made in Malaysia, by the way. All right, let's get this inside. There we go, look at those modules. Mm -mm -mm. And just like that, our laptop is upgraded. Pretty simple, if I do say so myself. All right, so we are back. And as you guys can see here, this computer can take 32 gigs each in the slot and we are rocking 64 gigs of memory. We have two SSD slots. So in terms of upgradability, this laptop is good to go. And I would say it's fairly easy. All right, next up, let's test this display and speakers and see what we are working with. Gonna make sure this is full brightness for you guys. Oh, little laggy here, as you can see. In real life, this looks amazing, by the way. Wow. 
Wow, that looks lifelike. Let's go to the end of the video here. You guys could ignore this spot right here. Turn off kitchen. This is seriously like one good looking display. In all seriousness, like, wow. Like this is seriously amazing. I can't believe a laptop looks this good. Honestly blown away. For this price point too, really nice, can't deny. All right, let's go ahead and test out the speakers. That was Dolby Atmos. Let me turn off Dolby Atmos and replay that because that sounded pretty bad in all honesty. The speakers are pretty bad. They're pretty bad and I would say Dolby Atmos kind of makes it worse. It just makes it more thinner. Can't say I'm a fan of the speakers, but it's a gaming laptop, not expecting much. All right, now let's do a good old typing test. Um, the keyboard is meh. For me, it's definitely in the average category. Um, it's not bad, but it's not spectacular either. It's just meh, you know what I mean? Like I can type on this, no problem. Um, but definitely I would not say I would want to use this keyboard for productivity purposes. If this is the only laptop I have, I'm gonna have to deal with it, but it's just a little loose, cheap feeling to me, and also sort of mushy. It is quiet though, I do like that, but can't say I'm the biggest fan of the keyboard. This is the camera test on the Asus Tough Gaming, and I've gotta say, for a laptop camera like this, not it's this this judder whenever I'm moving is kind of nauseating. So in terms of the camera department, Asus you might want to fix that a little bit. Um, the quality though, in terms of like how I look on a laptop camera, I'd say this is pretty good. But this judder or stuttering is ugh, makes me sick just doing that. I have to stop. So definitely gonna give this like a uh, C plus. All right, so I think. What I should do is since this is a gaming laptop, let's download some games and see what the performance is like. All right, so let me know if you guys want me to do benchmarks like this inside of my gaming focused laptops that come across this channel. Now, I did drop the resolution down to 1080, 1920 by 1080, simply because on a display this small, small, like a 15 inch laptop, I think 1080p is fine. 1440p is great and all, but for gaming, I think 1080p is gonna be more than enough. It'll allow you to crank up the resolution and you'll be able to get FPS like this. So we're hitting easily over 60, 
Um, the other thing that I do want to mention as well is that these benchmarks are running on settings that I would typically run on. So you're probably never going to see me run on ultra or the highest setting possible. It's always going to be one below because I think in terms of what you're going to get out of the game, high versus the highest or ultra isn't that big of a difference. And personally, I don't care about ray tracing as well. So in the scene here, as you can see, um, once again, we are hitting well above 60, no problems. And I've got to say, looks pretty good. We are dipping a little bit below 60, um, but I would say this is nothing that is unplayable by any means. So do keep in mind that even though this display is 165 Hertz on some main AAA games, we're most definitely not going to be hitting um, those frame rates. You're only gonna be getting those FPS um, numbers if you're playing no offense, FPS games, or games that require very quick reaction time or input, like fighting games. So I'd say overall, in terms of AAA quality, this is pretty good. All right, we got an average of 71. I'd say that's pretty playable. All right, so another game that I would say is probably really popular right now, um, it's not the base God of War, it is the God of War Ragnarok, but God of War recently came out on PC, played it on the hardest difficulty and I enjoyed it. So let me go ahead and play this real quick and let you guys know what kind of frames we're getting. And of course this controller doesn't work. All right, just to give you guys some proof, this is Give Me God of War in Jotunheim. And if you know the game, that is end game. So, all right, so for the God of War settings here, um, I'm definitely limited to the amount of power I have from the GPU. As you can see, I already have a warning here for the VRAM that I have. Um, so my DLSS is set to balance, so it's actually upscaling from 836 up, which is perfectly fine for me. And then in terms of the graphics department, I just have it set to original because I'm telling you guys, if you try to run this on basically resources you don't ha have, it's going to struggle, trust me. So I'm just gonna run it on the original um, basically how it's supposed to look like and show you guys what it looks like. Um, so that small encounter here, um, it doesn't look like I'm dipping below 60 at all. And I would say that in terms of the graphics and smoothness, I'm pretty happy with it. Obviously, if you want to crank things up a little bit, it's going to probably dip a little bit more. Um, but I would say at a resolution this small, once again, anything higher, you're really not going to notice that big of a difference. Um, but to also give you guys some context, here's how the fans sound as well. Let me actually put it right here. It's not too loud. I definitely think whenever you're playing a game, the game itself is probably gonna drown, drown out the sound. Um, but if you have headphones on, other people are definitely gonna hear this laptop and be like, wow, you are you are doing something serious on that laptop. All right, so that is my first impressions of the Asus Tough Gaming. Um, once again, do keep in mind, this is the higher trim model. Um, so the one on Amazon is definitely a little bit more low spec. I think that one has a 1650. Um, so do keep in mind the performance that you see in this video is not gonna be the same on what is on Amazon. But if you have a similar configuration like this, I would say it's actually a pretty good buy. Um, in terms of the actual performance compared to a Zephyrus though, I would say the Zephyrus probably handles this computer, um, no questions asked. But in terms of design, I would prefer this tough gaming laptop over the Zephyrus any day of the week. It's just a lot more, <laughs> it just doesn't scream gamery to me. It's a very simplistic design boxy 
Um, the material on the top is very prone to fingerprints, so do keep that in mind. I do like how, in terms of the upgradability factor, we have the option to upgrade the SSD and the RAM as well, but do keep in mind DDR5 RAM is pretty pricey, so I'd say wait till the prices drop and upgrade it from there. Um, even outside of gaming, I would say I would want to use this laptop um, as just like a regular daily driver for like productivity purposes as well. Um, once again, you have that RTX 3060, or excuse me, 3050. So in terms of video editing, streaming, stuff like that, this laptop is more than capable. Um, the 12th generation is no slouch. Um, obviously AMD still edges a little bit in that generation. Um, but if we were to move up to the 13th generation of Intel and Asus makes this laptop, I would say it's actually a steal. Um, steal, but in terms of the pricing, probably not as much. But um, unfortunately, there is no biometric, so there's no Windows Hello with the facial recognition or fingerprint. But, you know, with the gaming laptops, you're not really trying to have the best of feature sets per se. You're really just here for the performance and the display. And I'm happy to see this. Um, so overall, once again, first impressions of the Asus Tough Gaming Laptop. Let me know if you guys have any questions. If you like this newer style, of unboxing and first impressions with gaming laptops. If there's anything you guys would recommend down below for things that I can prove, let me know down in the comments below. I appreciate every single sub like and comment. And as always guys, much love. Asus, keep it up. Right now, I would say you're probably at the top of the channel in terms of gaming laptops because so far you're doing pretty good.